Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, and today I'm here to talk to you about how you can maximize your value with the security ecosystem with InfoBlocks. First, I'll give you a brief overview of InfoBlocks' ecosystem and how it works. Then, I'll talk to you and show you two use cases on how you can protect your local networks and branch offices, as well as show you what happens when you don't use InfoBlocks. Finally, I'll briefly summarize the benefits of InfoBlocks' ecosystem and the value of what I'll be showing you. First, a brief overview of what InfoBlox ecosystem is and how it works. When events occur, such as obtaining a new lease, recruiting a new host, or a malicious site being accessed, InfoBlox triggers events on its appliances to send information about what just happened to third-party vendors and partners, such as Palo Alto, Fortinet, Hannibal, and many more. These security partners can then use this information to quarantine endpoints, block connections, run scans, and much more. Now let's walk through how InfoBlox can protect your local users. First though, let's see what happens when you're not protected by InfoBlox's DNS. Here, in this use case, when a user tries to access a malicious site from the internet, they may download content that then gets them infected with something that steals information by encrypting it. However, with InfoBlox as the DNS, you can redirect users when they try to access the malicious content to a safe site which will trigger InfoBlox's ecosystem to inform your firewalls to block the user and vulnerability scanners to start scanning the user for vulnerabilities, and at the same time provide your security and IT team with tickets about what just occurred. Now let's see that in action. Here on the left, we have an unprotected user sending its DNS to 8.8.8.8, and on the right, we have the protected user sending its DNS to the on-premise DNS firewall. And here, you can see the files of the unprotected user are not yet encrypted. Now here, the unprotected user goes to a malicious site and clicks on what seems to be a harmless link to download an executable. The user then runs the executable, thinking it's what they wanted. Here, we can see that the user gets a message saying that their files are encrypted, and sure enough, when we go look at the previous files that we just looked at, they are encrypted and unusable. However, when a protected user goes to the same site and clicks on the link, they are redirected and warned about where they try to go. And most importantly, the files that they have are not encrypted. Now, InfoBlox didn't just stop at protecting the user. As when we go to Palo Alto and wait a minute, then hit refresh, we will see that the user is now being blocked from the internet. And going over to Tenable, we can see that a scan has started to see if there's any vulnerabilities. And heading over to Rapid7, we can see a scan is in progress. And finally, the security and IT teams got a ticket informing them about what just happened, even before the user has time to report it themselves. And here, you can see that the user has lost internet connection as the web page refuses to load. Now let's take a look at branch offices and remote users. When a remote user, or in this case a branch office, tries to access a malicious site, InfoBlox's DNS forwarding proxy will send the request to our SaaS solution, which will redirect the user to a safer site. After every couple of minutes, InfoBlox's on-premise solution will pull down the malicious information from the cloud and trigger InfoBlox's ecosystem to inform your firewalls to block the user and vulnerability scanners to start scanning the user for vulnerabilities. And at the same time, provide your security and IT teams with tickets about what just occurred. Now let's see that in action. Here on the right, we have a branch office user. And on the left, we have our lab environment with all of our tools. Here, the user tries clicking the same malicious link as earlier, and we can see that it's redirected by InfoBlox's SaaS solution to a safer web page. When heading over to InfoBlox's cloud solution and hitting refresh, we can see that the information about the security event was recorded. Then heading over to Fortinet FortiGate Next Gen Firewall, we can see that the user was added to the block list. And heading over to Tenable, we can see that a new scan was started for the user 21 seconds ago. Then finally, heading over to Rapid7, we can see that a scan was in progress for that user. And finally, a ticket was provided to our security and IT teams 
with the information about what just occurred. Now let's walk through what we just saw. First, we had an unprotected user access the malicious site and saw that their files were encrypted. Then, with Infoblox's local DNS firewall, we saw that we were able to redirect the protected user and kick off ecosystem to block access to that user, scan the user, and create a ticket about what just happened. Then, with Infoblox's cloud DNS firewall, we saw the exact same thing, showing that we can protect users both on-premise or remotely by redirecting them and then triggering Infoblox's ecosystem to automate the security to protect the users and the assets. Benefits of this include faster responses to firewall policies, vulnerabilities, or virus scans, and creation of tickets, reduced risk of targeted attacks by way of the DNS with data that Infoblox provides through the threat intelligence teams, and finally, improved security while maximizing the ROI for all your security products. So this all around maximizes your security investment, increases the visibility for security operations, and automates incident responses. Well, thank you for your time. If you have any other questions or concerns, you can find me or any of the other experts here at Infoblox on the Infoblox community website. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day.